Another Andy News video, as he promised, Rudius versus Luke. He made an entirely separate video for this. Let's see what he has to say. Rudius versus Luke was far more than just a one-sided beatdown. Not only was it a measure for how Rudy compared to the average swordsman, but it was also a sincere expression of loyalty towards Silphy. One okay. you'd be surprised to hear came mostly from Luke, but was actually his idea from the very beginning. So the whole excuse from Princess Ariel's side is... Uh, we want to see if you're a, a man to if if you can protect Sophie, right? I think that's the I, I, the explanation they gave. But it's like, why did you test the swordsman skills, right? He's already a magician, and I know that magicians and swordsmanship, right? There is like um, it's like a rock paper scissors thing. Magicians are usually better in range, but if a swordsman isn't within range, they should be able to kill the magician, right? So I understand that part, but Ariel specifically requested a swordsman duel. Well, I guess it's because Luke doesn't, you know, use... I don't know if he uses magic, but he's mostly a swordsmanship. But on top of that, on top of like, are you able to protect Sophie? Isn't it more of like, are you an ally that I can trust and put my faith into as we gear into retaking the Asura Kingdom thing? Right? I think that was Princess Ariel's more important intentions in scoping Rudy. But why specifically swordsmanship? Just to see if he's like all-rounded? I don't know. What the anime left out which would have made this fight even better though was Rudy's thoughts after of how it was so incredibly easy and his gradual realization towards why it was necessary. <laughs> bro beat Luke and he's like, she, you've been fucking training the weight of the sword, bro. My swordsmanship, this is a fucking hobby to me. I just do it because my dad taught me a while ago and I just do a little 10 minute exercise in the morning. It was still too easy. So as we take a look at that and how this fight really went, Consider leaving a like if you enjoyed the cut content from this video or last Y'all know video. what to do. And hopefully from this one you'll gain an appreciation for why this fight was so important. Now, just in case you missed it in the last video. Figurina, use the discount code Andy News for your first purchase off of Figurama and back to the main content. Right statue, and feel free to come to the stream and try to yep. compete for one. Yep. But anyway, with the reception wrapping up and Silphy talking... Is this what you guys do for my Sakura Co. and Tokyo Tree sponsors? You know what? I get it. I understand, right? You gotta be incentivized to buy the product, right? I get it. I get it. I totally understand that. Elise, the duel was an idea I would that Ariel made clear came from Luke. I know the anime made it seem like it was for all their sakes, but in actuality, it was mainly something that Luke wanted. It was his request Why? from the very beginning, and something he informed Ariel he desired even before the wedding reception. Did... What, what, did Luke want to protect Sylphie, or is it more like Luke wants to see how he compares to Rudy as a fellow Grey Rat? Is, is that the idea? Now, naturally, a duel like this could never be perceived as just for fun since the weapons being used were both extremely lethal. Like, Luke's double-edged blade meant he wasn't going to be attacking with any blunt side, and Rudy's stone sword meant his attacks would carry quite a bit of weight to them. Yeah, he fucking destroyed his hand, bro! Luke's hand was all fucked up, and then, didn't Luke, like, punch the ground with this fucked up hand after? Because he was so upset that he lost or something, or the frustration? I'm like, oh! That may not sound very dangerous for Rudy's case, but after swinging this dense sword every day for hundreds of thousands of practice swings, Rudy knew if he hit someone in the wrong spot with it, it could definitely prove to be fatal. I mean, you're saying that he used the same sword to practice with it, but this is a wooden sword here and not the stone sword, but I'm sure this is just one frame out of the many that he could have picked. Rudy knew if he hit someone in the wrong spot with it, it could definitely prove to be fatal. That was just how dangerous the impact Different sword. It was. It was thick, heavy, and durable to the point that you probably shouldn't hit Ooh. someone with it. Especially not for something that was supposedly just for fun. Ooh, that was right on the wrist. In the anime, it looked like he just crushed his fingers, but the manga, I think, is showing the wrist being hit. Ariel wasn't too bothered by Rudy's warning, though, since in addition to this being something Luke asked for himself, he was also going in fully knowing he could die from it. Should the worst come to pass, then Luke was ready to accept both injury and death. Jesus. Whatever the outcome, he was more than ready for it. I didn't realize this is so fucking serious. Bro was ready to just risk his life for this one fucking duel to see if Rudy can protect Sophie, but there must be more to it than just that, right? This was something Ariel was fully aware of, and she made sure to tell Rudy and even let him know he could beat Luke senseless if he wanted to. This obviously wasn't very reassuring for Rudy, since with him being just an average swordsman and Luke, well, the royal guard of a princess... Is he an average swordsman, though? Because, like, Paul's kind of cracked. Paul already trained him as a kid. 
Rui Jardineris. I'm sure Rudy also kind of trained with them time from time. It, and he's been always swinging his sword, every, like in, in Season 2 Part 1. I've noticed that. They always included just him doing practice sessions in the morning. I'm like, why the fuck is he still, you know, training with the sword? But then it's like, here it is. He's, you know, there's an application of the sword right now. So it's most likely Rudy doesn't see himself as a great swordsman because he identifies as a magician. But in fact, because he's been training and he has the fundamentals in the beginning. And let's not forget about Ghislaine also. Remember, did Ghislaine train us? Maybe. Rudy's got to be, wonder what rank he is in the swordsmanship, huh? And there's also multiple different types of the swordsmanship. So I guess if they're doing fast strikes like this, both Rudy and, you know, Luke are Sword God. I think Sword God is the one where it's like uh, the most upfront one. Like, it's like whoever gets the first strike wins, right? I, I, I think that's the style that I enjoy the most. And then there's like different other styles. One other one where it's like more deceptive and more conceited, right? Is that the Water God one? Oh, no, no, no. The Water God one, I think, is the redirection, right? It's like a defensive one where you're able to parry and do stuff like that. And then there's like the North or some shit where it's like you do more like sketchy shit, right? Rudy was certain there was going to be this insurmountable gap between them. This would then spur Ariel to give a complete description of how strong Luke really was. And on paper, he seems actually pretty scary. Yeah, so really? He's intermediate in Sword God style and okay. in Water God, then intermediate. Has several magic items making him. <laughs> magic Uchigatana, 12th 25, fucking weeb, Dex, Build, Samurai, and Elden Ring, bro. Where is my Gigachat full strength Unga Boonga Grey Swords at? Even stronger than that. His sword is enhanced to cut through shields as easy as butter, then his boots imbued with magic to enhance his speed. Is this League of Legends icon? I haven't played League since like fucking 2016, bro, or some shit like that. It, it kind of looks like a new modified out on the League boots or some shit. His cloak blocks heat, making him fire resistant, and his gloves increase his strength to make his strike stronger and faster. Okay. With all that, his clothing described as swordproof, so all None of all, that shit did anything. Hitted. It was like facing a legendary hero minus the hero part. A pay-to-win gamer who was only just a casual player. Buffy. Gear like this was known to be so incredibly expensive that even if Rudy sold his newly renovated house, he still wouldn't have enough money to pay for all of it. You it serious? It was information he probably could have done without since hearing- Luke walks around with an entire fucking house on him? Well, it's like a pretty old rundown mansion, but still, damn. All about it made him- That was Dota? Okay, it's not Lego's Dota, my bad. I think that he would be the one getting beat senseless. Once again, Ariel would reassure Rudy he'd be fine, but just in case he still didn't believe her, she would give him one last option to provide him It was League. Am I right? Am I wrong? Hey, focus! That's not the focus here! We focus on Mushoku Tensei! Comfort. Should he ever feel like his life was in danger, then then and only then would Ariel allow him to use his magic. Cheaters. Of course, that didn't provide safety to Luke, but once again, that was a risk he was willing to take. Now. It was even with that that Rudy would still be hesitant, so that's when Luke himself would step up in order to change that. It was that single line we saw him say in the anime, in addition to an unfair remark questioning Rudy's manhood. He basically said if Rudy was a man he'd understand, which to Rudy was complete nonsense he felt he'd never understand. That's like Denkin pulling up and just like trying to start a fist fight. You're a man, right? Let's finish it like men. Obviously he couldn't say he didn't, so in an effort to make it seem like he did, Rudy would reluctantly accept the duel, feeling like he'd just been cheated in some way. He didn't like the idea of Luke it's like crying in the manga. Like this. I mean, he had essentially called him out, saying that if he didn't accept, then he wasn't a real man. So, Rudy would have no choice but to accept, but as a precautionary measure to ensure neither him nor Luke would die from it, he would activate his demon eye and use its foresight. We did the see that, yeah. Ready themselves only three steps apart. Luke, they don't know we have demon eyes, though, right? This is like rare information. Yeah, Luke had no fucking shot from the beginning. I forgot about that. It's like, how the fuck is Luke supposed to be Rudy if Rudy's already doing swordsmanship and, like, he has a demon eye? Heart, making it so in only one step either would be in striking distance. It was a tighter gap than what Rudy usually practiced with, but... Like, even at this level. I wonder at this point if Eris could beat Luke right now. Probably? Eris is kind of cracked. But one he wasn't Maybe? going to panic over since, well, how serious could this be? He would have no idea why this was happening even up to the moments right before the fight. Rudy would then tell Cliff to get his healing magic ready and Ariel would commence the fight shortly after that. Took me like six Hajimes to, you know, get it, but goddamn, Ariel fucking delayed the Hajime in the dual part in the anime for so long, got me. It's here that I wish the anime added a little bit more to it since while they did show how Luke was completely outmatched, they didn't truly express just how much he was.
What I mean is that, the instant the match had started, Rudy was taken aback by just how slow Luke was. Oh shit, you didn't have to do him that dirty. In the anime, as soon as Ariel said Hajime, like Luke dashed in, Rudy kind of went in, one strike and it was over, right? Hit the fucking hand and then pointed at him, it was over. But like, in the manga, in the light novel, he straight up had an internal monologue thinking, holy shit, this guy's fucking slow. It's not that Luke was slow compared to the average person, but, but when you to consider Rudy. who it was Rudy had trained with and fought before, for some Luke was a whole entire universe behind. That's crazy. Are you comparing child Aeris right now to Luke and comparing a whole universe behind? So Aeris back then in season 1 was stronger than Luke right now. Aeris is cracked, right? We have... Who did we fight? Who did we train with? We had Paul, Ghislaine, Aeris... Uh, fucking Ruijard, right? These are fucking insane. They're all swordsmen. Well, they do melee. Ruijard, spear, but still kind of, you know, combat with, you know, melee range. He was nowhere near the level of Eris and Ruijard. Bald! Galaxies apart from I'm the sorry, Ruijard. Then even a whole step behind that of Soldat. Right, there was Soldat also. Orsted's just not fair. You can't compare anyone to Orsted. So in the manga, you see Luke in the very back, right? You see... Luke in the far back. So this is the beginning of the duel. Luke is running. But then Rudy's realizing, shit, this guy's so fucking slow. Then he envisions how fast Ruijard or Eris will be at that moment huh, compared to Luke. That's crazy. And is this the first time we're seeing grown-up Eris here? I know this is just like visions that he's seeing. This is not real Eris. But Eris looks really grown up here. This is like after like, you know, time skip Eris. We still haven't seen her yet since like season one. Where the fuck is she? That's actually crazy that we've never seen Eris heard anything about her after season one. Like, are we... Maybe this is turning point related later? But like, is she just not going to be shown until season three? Like, what the fuck? If he had to compare Luke to anyone, the closest person he could think of was Linnea. She was... Not even Persona? Wait, who's stronger? I think Linnea's probably stronger than Persona, right? If he had to compare Luke to anyone, the closest person he could think of was Linnea. She was about the same speed as him, even with his items, and what about that Persona? made predicting his movements extremely easy. Okay. Luke's form wasn't anything special either, since while it was technically correct, his slow movements made any variations in them easily counterable. So, to Rudy, he was essentially fighting someone normal for once. A knight whose skills may be superior amongst his peers, but is completely manageable when compared to the bad for Luke. out there. Look at this fucking panel! You don't even see Eris' face in this panel because she's so ahead and Luke is still getting ready, bro. This panel is actually powerful. These, these panels, the manga panels of like um, Rougeard and Eris in, uh, like, uh, uh, like, uh, ahead of, ahead of uh, Luke, as well as this one where you only see Eris' hair. These are actually incredible panels to showcase how different the gap is between the people that we've been hanging out with and someone that is finally normal for once. But again... The people that we hang out with, they're just too fucking cool, man. I feel Your bad for Luke. There. It's not fair. This allowed Rudy to counter with a simple arm chop, which was a basic sword god skill he'd practiced over and Arm over. chop my ass! He chopped his hand! He repeated over 100,000 times, resulting in the very act of it being ingrained into his body. 100,000 The heavy slings? blow would then break Luke's arm right on impact, and before he could even switch to his other arm, Rudy would kick him in the chest and send him flying. That was quick. The he double taps. Over and Rudy the victor. Rudy double tapped so quick. Rudy couldn't believe how easy the match was, and he even went so far as to call it a joke. I mean, with so Wait, other not in front of Luke. He didn't call this joke. Like, he's like, wow, bro. You so bad. Trash. <laughs> Trash ass motherfucker. You, you're the guard for the princess? That's crazy. This is so bad. Mid. Mid. He didn't say that, right? This is all in his head, right? There's swordsmen out there who could beat him even with his magic. To so easily beat one without was quite the surprise for him. Mm. So much so that Rudy knew he didn't even need his demon eye. Sure, the fight would have gone on a little bit longer without it, but the outcome would have been the same given how basic Luke's attacks were. So, Ariel was absolutely right when she said that Luke was no match for him. This brings us now to the question of why, and while the obvious answer is because Luke was testing him, the true answer was something more akin to Luke's pride on the matter. So it was a grey rat dispute because like beyond protecting Sophie beyond potentially you know are you an ally for taking back the Astor kingdom later between us gray rats 
Are you better than me at swordsmanship? I know you're a cracked mage, but sword is my thing. Are you better than me at this? Is that what Luke was doing? As Ariel herself said in the anime, because her and Luke loved Silphy as a precious companion, it was only natural they want to make sure the person they're leaving her with is the right one. Sure, but beyond it was that... When Ariel brought up her duty after this that she made sure to emphasize the likely outcome was death. You see, as much as she wanted to believe that she could take the throne, to die trying was far more probable than actually succeeding right now. Rudy wondered why she didn't just abandon all that, but for Ariel this duty went beyond her life. It was to honor the memories of all those who died to get her this far. Oh no! This is the random guy that died from a boar in episode 0 of season 2 when Sylphie was like flying <laughs> Yo, someone needs to hire better knights and guards for Ariel. Who the fuck are these clowns? This dude got trounced by a fucking boar during a tea party, right? <laughs> yeah, Anonymous is only showing this one guy. There's a lot of other people that's been dead too, but like... I, I guess I'm just too used to cracked characters that's around Rudy. I shouldn't be comparing the average regular knights, you know, guard duty to these people, but like, goddamn. Memories of all those who died to get her this far. So, to leave that behind and stay here in Renoa was the same thing as to betray all those who'd helped her get here. She knew this privilege came with responsibility, and it was that unwavering conviction which Rudy really resonated with. To see her so resolute on the path that she'd set out for herself convinced Rudy that she actually would be a great ruler. Okay. The problem with a mindset like that, though, was that despite Sylphie having nothing to do with it, her unshakable bond with Ariel made her part of it now. Even if she wasn't bound to Asura the same way Ariel was, she was, however, bound to the bond that she'd formed with Ariel. Now, I wonder if this is anything sinister about this, right? Because Sylphie has no... She has no skin in the game in taking Mad Asura Kingdom, other than the fact that she's friends with Ariel. You think Ariel planned this from the beginning? She just probably wanted a friend. And she probably found that, you know, Fitz was... I mean, Fitz showed incredible magical potential. But did Ariel intentionally get close to Sylphie so that... She, she would have never fucking planned Sylphie and Rudy. And then it's like, oh yeah, I need to befriend Sylphie now. So that later on, in part two, when Rudy and Sylphie, you know, get it going, then it's like I can coerce Rudy into the same thing. No, no, I, I think these are just coincidences. And Ariel and Sylphie's friendship is genuine. But it's like, maybe in the back of her mind. She's like, hmm, I you know, I, I am the princess and I need to go back and retake this shit. At any point in the game, I will try to seek out powerful friends in networking. I think there is some overlap there. Yeah. It's, it, I think there's, there's like an overlap between... I reckon that Sophie is a powerful ally in the future. But I think we can also be friends. And there's nothing sinister of like, Oh, I only befriended you just so I can coerce Rudy into it. No, that's too far. That's way too far, right? Rudy honestly had no trouble understanding why that was, because if Richard got up one day and said he was going to fight Laplace, Rudy knew he would join him even if it did mean certain death. It's not necessarily the greatest comparison, but it does capture the idea of wanting to fight for your friends. That's not a foreshadowing for Manny News, right? Because he's already read the light novel, so him saying that would be a direct, you know, spoiler, but he's just giving one example of Richard. That's just how important close bonds like that were. Naturally, Rudy Yeah, important close bonds. So if Eris comes back, would Rudy, you know, go back with Eris? Close bonds, huh? Mm, this red-haired girl, bro. Mm, would Rudy fold? Ah. If he folds and just, like, leaves Sylphie for Eris when Eris comes back, if that ever happens, yo, people are gonna fucking lose it. People will get fucking livid on Twitter, bro. I think he might fold. I don't know. If he's able to say... Be gone, red hair thoughts. Not only are you near my distant cousin, I have Sophie not. Now, if he does that, if he's like, dub Rudy, you know, it's like, wow, he's definitely grown. But if he folds, oh, could you imagine the chaos that would fall after? That were. Naturally, Rudy would try to stop her if he knew the fight wasn't one she could win, but knowing Sophie and knowing how selfless she was, it was probably easier just to join her. What if she comes back, he folds, and then she leaves him again, and then he's left with another erectile dysfunction, and this time Sylphie can't even save it because Rudy pretty much gave up on Sylphie, and then we're just permanently crippled. No, we're getting into, we're getting into fan fiction territory now. That would be overtly cruel. <laughs> That's when Roxy... <laughs> You're right, we do have Roxy! 
<laughs> no! If she... That would be comically stupid if Rudy got another EDR because of Aerith coming back. But we do technically have Roxy, right? She is still a card that we haven't played yet. That's when Ariel would threaten to take Silphy back, and she would basically say how there were other methods in which she could do so. Sure, she couldn't beat Rudy in terms of raw power, but when you've been in the game as long as she has, Networking. there were definitely other Politics. ways to get around that. Diplomacy. Ariel would then leave shortly after, and it was then and there that Rudy thought, this is someone I want to be there for. It didn't matter what Ariel wanted or where it was, because when the day came... There it is. When that day comes, no matter what Ariel says, we're going to be there for her. So, I think everybody has been just like... I, I think everybody, to a certain degree, saw... How Ariel needs to take back Oscar Kingdom, the connection with Sylphie, and how Rudy would have been to get involved in it. So this is pretty much confirmation, but it'd be interesting if we actually didn't go there. Rudy knew he and Sylphie were going to be there for her. What about Rudy Eris? Then go back inside, and it was after Sylphie had heard about the duel that she would thank Rudy for going easy on Luke. She wasn't <laughs> remotely concerned that Rudy had just been in a fight, but was instead going easy on that Luke. Rudy had spared him. She knew Rudy could have killed him if he wanted to, but it was... You, you imagine killing Luke on the day of the fucking, you know, the marriage, you know, little uh, whatever event that we had. That would just leave such a bad taste in everyone's mouth. It was the fact that he didn't, which she was very much appreciative for. Of course, she felt bad for Luke, but for Rudy, it was clear him losing had never even occurred to Sylphie. But yeah. That's pretty much it for this episode. Okay. I hope you enjoyed seeing more from the duel, and if you did, consider leaving a like and subscribe. Y'all know what to do. Please go give to Mr. Annie's channel. Go like his videos. Sub to, sub to his channel if you haven't. But this duel between Rudy and Luke was so fast, and I think it was so obvious that who would win, but like the overwhelming power gap between those two was something I didn't expect because it was swordsmanship. Magic, I know, but swordsmanship, I know Rudy's been swinging that sword, and we've been seeing a little bit of the training sessions in the morning in part one. But to this degree was crazy. And Rudy went easy on him, right? So that's kind of fucking crazy. But again, is Eris ever going to come back? Is it somehow going to relate to, you know, retaking Astro Kingdom? Are we going to have another erectile dysfunction arc? This leaves me more excited, man.